Hi everyone, this is Ruchi Kulkarni and today we are going to do the chapter Mitchville the Otter written by Gavin Maxwell from your book First Light of Class 10th. The author of this story is Gavin Maxwell where he describes how his life changed after keeping an otter as a pet upon losing his first pet dog Johnny. So in this story he describes his life's journey with Mitchville. Mitchville is the name of his otter. He had bitter sweet experiences while traveling from Basra to London. Mitchville's intelligence took the author by surprise every time he saw Mitchville inventing a new game. And the bond which the author and Mitchville shared was one of a true unconditional love bond between a human and an animal. So let's get ready for today's session. We'll do reading and explanation, significance of the title, moral, summary, and all the question answers related to this chapter. But first, let's begin with its author, Gavin Maxwell. Gavin Maxwell was born on 15 July 1914 in Elric, United Kingdom. He was a British naturalist and author. He was best known for his non-fiction writing and his work with otters. He wrote the book Ring of Bright Water about how he brought an otter back from Iraq and raised it in Scotland. Ring of Bright Water sold more than a million copies and was made into a film starring Bill Travers and Virginia McKenna in 1969. His notable works are The Ring of Bright Water, Raven Seek Thy Brother, Lords of the Atlas and many more. He died on 7 September 1969 in Inverness, UK at the age of 55. Given Maxwell lives in a cottage in Camisfiona in the West Highlands in Scotland. When his dog Johnny died, Maxwell was too sad to think of keeping a dog again. But life without a pet was lonely. Read what happened then in Maxwell's own words. Early in the new year of 1956, I traveled to southern Iraq. By then it had crossed my mind that I should like to keep an otter instead of a dog. Crossed my mind means a thought that came into my mind. Otter is a semi-aquatic fish-eating mammal with an elongated body, dense fur and webbed feet. And that chemisphere ringed by water, a stone's throw from its door, would be an eminently suitable spot for this experiment. A stone's throw means a very short distance and eminently means very or extremely. When I casually mentioned this to a friend he as casually replied that I had better get one in the Tigris marshes Tigris is the name of a river and marshes means wetland so this whole phrase means the wetland of Tigris river for there they were as common as mosquitoes and were often tamed by the arabs tamed means trained We were going to Basra to the consulate general to collect and answer our mail from Europe. Basra is a city of Iraq. At the consulate general we found that my friend's mail had arrived but that mine had not. The author starts that in the beginning of 1956 soon after his dog passed away he traveled to southern Iraq. He was too lonely without a pet. but he did not want to keep a dog this time instead he thought that he'll keep an otter he thought that an otter at camisfiona was a good idea because otters loved water and camisfiona was a place which was surrounded by water and that water was very close by so it was the perfect place to try his new idea of domesticating an otter so when he shared this intention with his friend His friend told the author that he could get one otter from the marshes along the river Tigris because otters were very commonly found there and the Arabian people generally trained these otters 
to domesticate or to have them as their pet so they had this conversation when the narrator and his friend were going to basra which is also another city of iraq they had this conversation at that time and when they reached consulate general of basra they found that only author's friend's mail had arrived but he did not find any mail for himself i cabled to england and when 3 days later nothing had happened i tried to telephone cabled means sent a message by telegraph the call had to be booked 24 hours in advance on the first day the line was out of order on the second the exchange was closed for a religious holiday on the third there was another breakdown my friend left and i arranged to meet him in a week's time 5 days later my mail arrived i carried it to my bedroom to read and there squatting on the floor were two arabs beside them lay a sack that squirmed from time to time they handed me a note from my friend here is your otter squatting means sitting on one's knees and squirmed means twisted about when the author did not find any mail for himself he tried connecting to england via telegraph but when there was no response he tried connecting through a call which demanded to be booked a day in advance he could not connect with them because of a holiday and technical glitches for another 3 days finally his friend left and they both decided to meet after a week and his mail arrived after waiting for 5 more days as soon as the author received the mail he went to bedroom to read it only to find that two arab men with a sack which twisted itself again and again were sitting there on the floor these two arabs handed a note which was sent by author's friend and that note read that the otter was a gift from him the otter was packed in the sack which those two arabs had carried with the opening of that sack began a phase of my life that has not yet ended and may for all i know not end before i do it is in effect a thraldom to otters thraldom which is an old fashioned word means being under the control of an otter fixation fixation is a very strong attachment or feeling that i have since found to be shared by most other people who have ever owned one the creature that emerged from this sack onto the spacious tile floor of the consulate bedroom resembled most of all a very small medievally conceived dragon medievally conceived means an imagination of the middle age from the head to the tip of the tail he was coated with symmetrical pointed scales of mud armor between those tips was visible a soft velvet fur like that of a chocolate brown mole he shook himself and i half expected a cloud of dust but in fact it was not for another month that i managed to remove the last of the mud and see the otter as it were in his true colors when the author opened the sack he felt as if a new phase of his life has begun and he did not want that new phase of life to be ended he developed deep affection and a unique bond with the author that could only be understood by any person who has ever owned an otter now as soon as the narrator opened the sack the otter came out and he stood on the tiled floor he looked like a small dragon a dragon which could be an imaginary creature of the medieval world or of the medieval age he was completely covered in mud and from beneath it small patches of soft velvet fur could be seen the fur resembled the skin of a chocolate brown colored mole the otter was so much covered with mud that the author had to actually bathe him wash him clean him for almost a month every day so that its actual color could be seen mitchbill 
as I called the author was, in fact, of a race previously unknown to science, and was at length christened by zoologist Lutro Gale Perspiculata Maxwelli, or Maxwell's Otter. For the first 24 hours, Midgebill was neither hostile nor friendly. Hostile means unfriendly. He was simply aloof and indifferent, choosing to sleep on the floor as far from my bed as possible. Aloof and indifferent means keeping a distance. The second night, Midgebill came onto my bed in the small hours and remained asleep in the crook of my knees until the servant brought tea in the morning and during the day he began to lose his apathy and take a keen, much too keen interest in his surroundings. Apathy means absence of interest. The author named his pet Midgebill or in short Midge. Midgebill belonged to a race of otters that had been recently discovered by zoologists. It took the otter a little time to open up and get comfortable to his new surroundings. During the first 24 hours, Midgebill was neither friendly nor unfriendly with the author, but he simply stayed away as far as possible from the author or from author's bed. But on the second night, Midgebill became little bit comfortable and so he came onto the bed of the author and he slept in the crook of his knees until the servant brought tea the next morning. And during that entire day, the next day, he began to lose his absence of interest. And then he started to take keen interest in his surroundings. He started to look around and notice what was around him. I made a body belt for him and took him on a lead to the bathroom where for half an hour he went wild with joy in the water, plunging and rolling in it, shooting up and down the length of the bathtub underwater and making enough slosh and splash for a hippo. This, I was to learn, is a characteristic of otters. Every drop of water must be, so to speak, extended and spread about the place. So to speak means as it were, or one could say this. A bowl must at once be overturned, or if it will not be overturned, be sat in and sploshed in until it overflows. Splosh means make a soft splashing sound of water. Water must be kept on the move and made to do things. When static, it is wasted and provoking. Static means stable or fixed and provoking means tempting. When Mitchville got comfortable with the author, the author made a body belt for him and then he took him to the bathroom where Mitchville was so happy because he saw water after such a long time. For him, seeing water was a joy. So for the next half an hour, he went wild with joy playing in that water. He was plunging and rolling in it. He ran up and down the length of the bathtub under the water and he started to splash the water just like a hippopotamus does. And then the author learned one characteristic of otters. Otters love when the water overflows. So water must be kept on the move and water should be given some kind of movement. It should be made to do things. So otters do not like when the water is stable or fixed at one place because such stable or fixed water is very tempting for the otters. Two days later, Mitch will escape from my bedroom as I entered it and I turned to see his tail disappearing round the bend of the corridor that led to the bathroom. By the time I got there, he was up on the end of the bathtub and fumbling at the chromium taps with his paws. Fumbling means trying to do something in a clumsy manner. I watched, amazed. In less than a minute, he had turned the tap far enough to produce a trickle of water and after a moment or two achieved the full flow. He had been lucky to turn the tap the right way. On later occasions, he would sometimes screw it up still tighter 
chittering with irritation and disappointment at the tap's failure to cooperate chittering means shivering with anger now slowly mitchbill started to become more and more comfortable with the narrator two days later after that incident mitchbill escaped from author's bedroom to the washroom or to the bathroom when author went inside the bathroom to see what mitchbill was doing he was amazed to see that mitchbill could turn the tap of the water and the water could flow out so that day Mitchbill was fortunate enough to turn it towards the right direction but later on many occasions he used to turn it in the wrong direction and making the tap so tight that the water would never come out of the tap and that would cause a lot of irritation and disappointment because then he felt that the tap wasn't cooperating with him Very soon Mitch would follow me without a lead and come to me when I called his name. He spent most of his time in play. He spent hours shuffling a round ball round the room like a four-footed soccer player using all four feet to dribble the ball. Dribble means touch the ball lightly with feet. And he could also throw it with a powerful flick of the neck. Flick means a quick light movement to a surprising height and distance but the real play of an otter is when he lies on his back and juggles with small objects between his paws marbles were mid's favorite toys for this pastime he would lie on his back rolling two or more of them up and down his wide flat belly without ever dropping one to the floor Soon Mitchbill started to respond to the author without a lead he would follow the author and whenever author called him by his name he would come to him he spent most of his time in playing and he loved to play with a rubber ball round the room just like a soccer player he used to dribble the ball between his four feet and he could also throw it by the flick of his neck But the most enjoyable play of an otter is when he lies on his back and he juggles small objects like marbles between his paws. He loved to roll on his back and he loved that when two or more marbles would roll on his flat belly without even dropping one marble to his floor. So playing with marbles was one of his favorite pastimes and marbles were his favorite toys. The days passed peacefully at Basra but I dreaded the prospect of transporting Mitch to England and to Kamasferna. Dreaded the prospect means was in great fear of something that would happen in the future. The British airline to London would not fly animals so I booked a flight to Paris on another airline and from there to London. The airline insisted that mitch should be packed into a box not more than 18 inches square to be carried on the floor at my feet i had a box made and an hour before we started i put mitch into the box so that he would become accustomed to it and left for a hurried meal accustomed means adjusted at basra the days passed peacefully for author but every day author had a great fear because he had to transport mitch to england and back to kemasferna where his home was but british airline to london would not allow the animals to fly so he had to book a flight to paris on another airline and from paris he would take the next one to london but the airlines insisted that mitch should be put in a box and that box should not be more than 18 inches of square and that box should be carried on the floor at the author's feet in the flight so the author made a box and right one hour before he started he put mitch in that box so that mitch will will become accustomed or adjusted to that box and quickly the author left to have a meal when i returned there was an appalling spectacle an appalling spectacle is a shocking scene There was complete silence from the box 
but from its air holes and chinks around the lid blood had trickled and dried i whipped off the lock and tore open the lid and mitch exhausted and blood splattered whimpered and caught at my leg whipped off means quickly took off and whimpered means cried off pain he had torn the lining of the box to shreds when i removed the last of it so that there was no cutting edges left it was just 10 minutes until the time of the flight and the airport was 5 miles distant i put the miserable mitch back into the box holding down the lid with my hand when the author returned after having a meal he had a shocking scene to witness there was complete silence from the box the author had made holes on the lid or around the lid and he saw that the blood had trickled out of those holes and it had dried the author quickly took off the lock and tore open the lid to see what had happened to mitch mitch was completely exhausted he was covered in blood and he cried in pain the moment he saw the author and suddenly he caught the author's leg while mitch was in the box he had torn the lining of the box to small pieces to shreds so the author had to remove every little piece of the shred so that no cutting edge can again hurt him but by then it was just 10 minutes left for the flight and the author had to quickly leave for the airport because the airport was 5 miles away so he quickly put mitch back into the box he held down the lid with his hand and moved ahead towards the airport i sat in the back of the car with the box beside me as the driver tore through the streets of basra like a ricocheting bullet a ricocheting bullet is a bullet which changes direction after hitting a surface the aircraft was waiting to take off i was rushed through to it by infuriated officials infuriated means very angry luckily the seat booked for me was at the extreme front i covered the floor around my feet with newspapers rang for the air hostess and gave her a parcel of fish for mitch to keep in a cool place i took her into my confidence about the events of the last half hour took her into my confidence here means shared with her my experiences or secrets i have retained the most profound admiration for that air hostess she was the very queen of her kind she suggested that i might prefer to have my pet on my knee and i could have kissed her hand in the depth of my gratitude but not knowing otters i was quite unprepared for what followed the author now left for the airport and he sat at the back of the car and the driver started to drive through the streets of basra like a ricocheting bullet like a fast bullet which changed directions after hitting a surface the aircraft was ready to take off and the angry officials of the airport rushed the author through to the aircraft luckily the seat which the author had booked was at the extreme front he covered the floor with newspapers where he kept his feet and he rang for the air hostess he gave a parcel of fish which he had brought for mitch and told her to keep in a cool place and then he shared his experiences with that air hostess about all the events which happened in the last half an hour in relation to mitch bill air hostess was a very kind lady so the author was told that he could keep mitch bill on his knees this made the author feel so nice that he could have kissed her in gratitude or in thankfulness but after this the author didn't know what lay ahead or what followed ahead mitch was out of the box in a flash he disappeared at high speed down the aircraft there were squawks and shrieks and a woman stood up on her seat screaming out a rat a rat squawks means loud noise i caught sight of mitch's tail disappearing beneath the legs of a portly white turbaned indian portly means stout driving for it i missed 
but found my face covered in curry perhaps said the air hostess with the most charming smile it would be better if you resumed your seat and i will find the animal and bring it to you i returned to my seat i was craning my neck trying to follow the hunt when suddenly i heard from my feet a distressed chitter of recognition and welcome craning means stretching out distressed chitter means suffering from pain a noise which the animals make when they are suffering from pain and mitch bounded on to my knee and began to nuzzle my face and my neck bounded on to means climbed up quickly and nuzzle means to rub gently with the nose the author was very happy when he was allowed by the air hostess to take mitchbill out of the box and keep him on his lap the moment the author lifted the lid mitch ran out of the box and he disappeared down the aircraft people started to shout there was a woman who stood up on her seat and she started to scream a rat a rat as if she had seen a rat the author could see that mitch was running under the seats when he tried to catch hold of mitch he disappeared beneath the legs of a very stout white turbaned indian the author dived again to catch him but he missed it again and he found that the curry which the person was eating had fallen on his own face then the air hostess came about and with a charming smile she told the author that it would be better if he sat on his seat and she would bring the animal back to him so the author returned to his seat but he was constantly looking back stretching his neck trying to see where mitch was suddenly he heard that same old chitter of mitch he saw that mitch had come near him mitch climbed onto his knee and he began to rub gently his nose against the author's face and his neck Mitch and I remained in London for nearly a month. He would play for hours with a selection of toys, ping pong balls, marbles, rubber fruit and a terrapin shell that I had brought back from his native marshes. Terrapin shell is a shell of a small turtle found in North America. With a ping pong ball he invented a game of his own which could keep him engrossed for up to half an hour at a time. engrossed means completely interested in a suitcase that i had taken to iraq had become damaged on the journey home so that the lid when closed remained at a slope from one end to the other mitch discovered that if he placed the ball on the high end it would run down the length of the suitcase he would dash around to the other end to ambush its arrival hide from it crouching to spring up and take it by surprise grab it and trot off with it to the high end once more ambush means to attack suddenly from a hidden position and crouching means bent on the knees the author and mitch stayed in london for a month while mitch had learned to keep himself interested in a lot of games the author had brought his favorite toys like ping pong balls marbles rubber fruit and a terrapin shell from his native marshes ping pong ball kept him engaged for about half an hour because it was his favorite toy the author's suitcase had damaged on the journey so the lid of the suitcase had developed a slope from one end to the other mitch would roll the ball from the higher end of that suitcase towards the lower end and then he would rush to the lower end and hide waiting for the ball to reach The moment the ball reached he would jump up in time and surprise the ball then he would catch the ball and rush once again to the higher end of the suitcase very excitingly he would again hit the ball from the other end so this kind of play had become his favorite time pass and he used to keep playing those games for hours and hours together outside the house i exercised him on a lead precisely as if he had been a dog mitch quickly developed certain compulsive habits on these walks in the london streets compulsive habits means habits impossible to control
like the rituals of children who on their way to and from school must place their feet squarely on the center of each paving block must touch every seventh upright of the iron railings upright means post or rod placed straight up or pass to the outside of every second lamp post opposite to my flat was a single storied primary school along whose frontage ran a low wall some 2 feet high on his way home but never on his way out midge would tug me to this wall jump on to it and gallop the full length of its 30 yards to the hopeless distraction both of pupils and of staff within distraction means something that takes away one's attention from what one is doing the author would take midge for a walk and exercise just like a pet dog Midge would run around the streets in a particular fashion just like school kids did like children formed different habits of placing their feet in the center of each block that came their way or of touching every seventh pole of the railing or criss crossing out the street light poles there was a primary school with only the ground floor being constructed opposite the author's flat and there was a very low height wall almost around 2 feet high that ran along the school's boundary and on their way back home midge would pull the author towards that wall jump on that 2 feet wall and run on its entire length at a high speed through this activity he would distract all the students and the staff who were inside the school it is not i suppose in any way strange that the average londoner should not recognize an otter but the variety of guesses as to what kind of animal this might be came as a surprise to me otters belong to a comparatively small group of animals called mustelines mustelines is a subfamily of animals which includes weasels ferrets and minks shared by the badger mongoose weasel stoat mink and others i faced a continuous barrage of conjectural questions that spread all the must lines but the author barrage of conjectural questions means a stream of questions filled with guesses more random guesses hit on a baby seal and a squirrel is that a walrus mister reduced me to giggles and outside a dog show i heard a hippo a beaver a bear cub a leopard one apparently that had changed its spots and a brontosaur midge was anything but an otter since an otter is not very common animal in london the author found it very strange that the residents were unable to recognize him people would make wild guesses as to what midge was otters belong to a group of animals called mustelines and other animals like badger or mongoose weasel stoat mink etc also belong to this category people could guess all animals of that group but they could not guess that he was otter the most famous guesses about what mitch could be was a baby seal or a squirrel some even guessed that he was a hippo or a beaver or a leopard or walrus etc but the question for which i awarded the highest score came from a laborer digging a hole in the street i was still far from him when he laid down his tool put his hands on his hips and began to stare as i drew nearer i saw his expression of surprise and affront as though he would have me know that he was not one upon whom to play jokes affront means insult i came abreast of him a breast means side by side he spat glared and then growled out here mister what is that supposed to be the author feels that the most shocking reply came from a laborer who was digging a hole and when he saw author with mitchbill he paused his work and observed mitch the man kept his tool aside he placed his hands on his back and he stared at mitch his expressions of surprise and insult signaled that he would not tolerate any nonsense he spat 
spat is a past tense of spit so he spat stared at both author and mitch and asked the author in a loud voice that what was that mitch will supposed to be because he could not understand what kind of animal mitch will was This chapter story explains the beautiful bond of the author with his pet otter Mitchbill and he very candidly describes series of incidents that happened during their journey to London This whole chapter involves around the habits and activities of Mitchbill and also how other people reacted on seeing Mitchbill We also understand that the author developed affinity towards Mitchbill with time He clearly describes his bitter sweet experiences with us through this story. And since this chapter is an account of the author's bitter sweet experiences with Mitchbill, the chapter is aptly titled as Mitchbill the Otter. The story suggests that animals have a surreal bonding with humans. Pets make our life worth living. They love us unconditionally and their loyalty has no dearth. So the moral of the story is that when we keep pets, we must care for them, give them good food and lots of love. They are God's innocent beings. They come in our lives only to spread happiness. Therefore, we must reciprocate their unconditional love that's all in today's session and before i wrap up this session let me display the summary of this chapter and all the question answers which include oral comprehension check thinking about the text and thinking about language sections And if you like learning with me please like share and subscribe to my channel and continue growing with me thank you very much take good care of yourself i'll see you again in my next video till then best wishes and goodbye